Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is, fingers crossed, I've remembered to put this intro in black and white. If I haven't, hello, welcome to Technicolor. This, as you will have seen from the thumbnail, uh, the title, and indeed if you have read it, uh, the description, is a collaboration between myself and the ever so beautiful Angelica. You're getting an Angie sandwich. That sounds wrong. Anyway, I shall continue. And we are doing a collab using two of the Colourpop Nine Pan Purple Toned palettes. This is our Purple Power look. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours I've chosen from these two palettes, how this look turned out, and indeed, what it looks like in glorious Technicolor. And my friend, you, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. <coughs> Welcome back from the intro. Can you tell I haven't spoken since husband left for work a couple of hours ago? <laughs> I just had a slurp of drink as well so that my voice wouldn't do that. Anyway, um, I've waited a few hours because I'm hoping it's, it was going to brighten up, but uh, it hasn't. So the white balance may go up and down through this because it gets brighter, then the cloud comes back, and it gets brighter, and the cloud comes back. But... Hopefully my little LED lights behind the camera will help us with that. Now, I will have told you in the intro, which clearly I have not filmed yet, that this is a collaboration film with the ever so beautiful Angelica. You kind of got an Angie sandwich today. Um, and she recently picked up the Lilac You A Lot palette. And I messaged her saying, did you want to do a collab with it? And she's like, oh, I've already filmed with this, but yes, I'd still like to do a collab with you. So we decided that as we both have the It's My Pleasure as well, we would do a look with the Lilac You A Lot and the It's My Pleasure and call it the Purple Power look. Because... Obviously, It's My Pleasure came out first, which has the deeper tones. And then they brought out Le Lot, which has the lighter, more pastel tones. But you can see that together, I do actually make a cohesive, there we go, a cohesive palette with a nice mixture of purples, pinks, and a kind of a, almost like a bluey purple. When you, when you have the lilac you a lot next to it, it looks like a bluey purple. So, that's the plan for today. Uh, this is still a teaching channel, <clears throat> so because of that, I go at a speed suitable for beginners. Also, my chronic pain won't let me um, blend any quicker than that. If this is too slow for you, YouTube has a speed widget. Please use it. Please don't mind that I'm going too slowly. You've been warned. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to zoom you in and just talk you through the difference between hooded and deep set eyes, as I always do. Uh, and then I will start applying a colour. I'm going to be using my lovely Blush Tribe 
um, brushes today because these are the softest brushes that I've got and my fibro is particularly bad and my skin doesn't want me to touch it so those are the softest brushes that I've got there we go right faces washed moisturized SPF and primed the primers I've used today I use the touching sole uh, no problem <clears throat> on the middle of my forehead nose and chin on my cheeks I've used the milk hydro grip primer and obviously I've gone over the top of it with my usual antiperspirant primer more details of said antiperspirant primer can be found in one of the films listed in my description box along with oh, bloody thing keeps falling over along with all of my discount codes right let's get you zoomed in Even though this isn't that far away from me, it really hurts sometimes to bend forward to do that. <clears throat> right. Now, on my eyes, I have got my usual Crow and Pebble primer. Now, I've got the white one, which is Blank Page Cotton. Um, I do have a discount code with them. It's not an affiliated code. I just earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from the shop. Um, what I love about this primer is that it goes on dry, it's not sticky when it goes on so you don't have that choice of do I powder it so it's easier to blend on or do I not powder it, have the issues with blending but keep the bright colour. This is the best of both worlds. Even though it's not sticky it still grabs colour, but it grabs it as if it has been powdered, which it hasn't. So you still get the bright colours, which is awesome. Um, she does do, at the moment, I think it's six different shades still. Quite obviously the lightest, which is what I go for, because I am as pale as a freshly poured pint of milk. Apart from the dark circles under the eyes and a bit of melasma that I've got going on which I think is sun damage from the past when I used to cover myself in baby oil and try and get a tan. The 80s were a dangerous time, folks. <laughs> um, the deepest two shades she has are a chocolate brown and a black and then she's got three skin tone shades in between. So you should be able to find something that will work for you. Um, I just apply it with a fluffy brush similar to this because that gives me a nice light coating you really don't need much of it at all now deep set eyes and hooded eyes they have the same issues in that you get transference of color onto the upper lid if you're cutting your crease you have to go onto the upper lid rather than just through the socket line and if you're using glitter, even with glitter glue, you'll get a bare patch through the middle. There are workarounds for both different types of eyes, but they're very different. So a lot of people don't know about deep set eyes. So they, they see these symptoms for hooded eyes and think, oh, that must be what I have. And they follow the instructions for hooded eyes and wonders why their eye looks don't work. Could be because you've got deep set eyes like me. Right. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if the upper lid completely covers right down to the lash line, part or all of that mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Now, Deep set eyes. I'm going to demonstrate with this eye because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I can make sure I'm still on screen and in focus. If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, space that tucks back away out of sight. And then if I cover the upper lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got skin there that tucks back in as well. And it's those two bits of skin rubbing together that give me the same issues that people with hooded lids get. Right, so the workarounds are very different. If you have hooded eyes, i.e. if you cannot see all of this lid, 
get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, and sketch out on your upper lid where you want your new crease to fall. Obviously, that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow, so use smaller blending brushes, and if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow. You can still add a brow highlighter on top of it at the end if you want to. If you have deep set eyes like myself where you can see the mobile lid but you still get those issues of transference of colour etc. When you're putting the colour through your crease, which normally will be the deepest shade that you're using, just every so often sit back, relax your brows and just make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different eye types that have similar issues. Right, let's get some colour on this face shall we? I'm going to start off in the Lilac you alert. My white balance has gotten wafty again on my thingy. Right, I'm going to go into Ghosting, which is a pale pink. I really hope you can't hear the neighbours screaming. <sighs> and this is on my fluffy brush. Now, this is clean. It's just stained. It's just waiting for its deep clean at the end of the week. So, tiny little circular movements in this direction towards the nose. Bounce a bit in the middle. And then reverse the direction to come back out again. And I'm holding the brush right at the very end so that I put as little pressure on my lids as possible. Pick up a bit more colour and build the colour up. Until I get it to the intensity that I want. And the reason that I do circular movements instead of the windshield wiper that you see all these young 20 year olds doing is because I'm 45 years old and I've lost 14 stone, which is just under £200. So the skin on my eyelids moves. By doing circular movements you are very gently moving that skin around so you don't end up with like the tiger striping or the barcoding effect. Now, the only place this doesn't work for me is just here. Can you see this super deep creasing that I've got on my lid here? This is from when the eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic hospital when they were trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly. Um, and that has caused that damage. So I do have to stretch that lid out, especially when applying shimmers. Um, but I'll talk you through that stage when we get to there. So I'm now doing the same thing on the other eye. Just building the colour up. So, Angie, how did I get to know her? Well, I actually follow an awful lot of Swedish YouTubers. Now, I don't know if it's just coincidence, but all of the Swedish YouTubers I follow are very much like me. They're into colour. Now it could be because obviously they, being so much further up and closer to um, the North Pole, they do have like months and months and months where they get very little, if any, hours of daylight. Um, oh for goodness sake. <sighs> They've been quiet for the two hours that I was waiting for it to brighten up enough. I start filming and they start swearing and shouting at each other. I will try and cut it out, so I do apologise if you do hear anything. As I was saying, oh, no, they're door slamming, excellent. As I was saying, um, I don't know whether it's because they get very restricted daylight hours at parts of the year that makes them want to use more colours, but they all seem to absolutely love using bright colours, um, which, you know, if you know me, you know that it's very rare that I will do. I have done neutral looks because I've been requested to do neutral looks, but the majority of the time you'll see me using colour. I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches anymore, they're far too rough on your brushes, especially 
if you have natural hair brushes. These are synthetic, but um, yeah. I'm going to go into It's My Pleasure and dip into fan fiction because I'm going down the, the pinky lilac y route because I get the feeling that the other Angie might go more for the purples. And I don't think I've really done a pinky look with this before, I've always gone straight for the purples. So I'm going to add this just a little bit further down, got exactly the same motions, and I'm going to continue talking about Angie and uh, Yelica. Um, so I started following a lot of different Swedish YouTubers um, and then I discovered Stars Hollywood Jessica because I filmed my eyeshadow collection and I don't know if you know this but if you're a YouTube creator when you put films up and you add your tags on so that people when they're searching can find it you'll very often then find that films with similar tags will appear in your search feed and this particular film came up saying I have 1400 palettes and I'm like oh it's got to be a mistype surely it's like 400 or you know 140 no no Jessica had 1400 palettes at the time she probably got more now um, and this first film that I watched was literally just her hands and her voice and her palettes and I absolutely fell in love with her personality so I, I subscribed and then started watching some more of her films and just realised what an absolutely beautiful woman she is inside and out. And it was through following her that I discovered um, Linda um, and around about the same time I discovered Angie and Marlin. And regular viewers will recognise those names because I have collabed with these ladies on many occasions. Um, they are all absolutely wonderful women. Um, I mean Angie produces some stunning looks. She really does. Um, I don't think she realises just quite how good she is when it comes to doing makeup. She just I sit there and watch her films and her, her skill just blows me away, it really does. Um, so yeah, if you've not already watched her, you are in for a treat, because when you finish watching me, there'll be a link in my description box, you can nip over and you can watch some of her films. So I'm just trying to decide what colour I'm going to put through the crease. I really should have thought about this, shouldn't I? I think I might go back to the Lilac you a lot palette. I'm just going to clean this brush back off again and get a slightly more tapered brush. So how's your day been so far? Has it been a good one? Or are you at the start of your day? Are you watching me over your breakfast or while you're putting your makeup on? Let me know. I like knowing what people are doing when they're watching my films. I know, I know. It makes me a nosy cow, but I don't care. Right, again, this is clean, just stained. I'm just going to run it over the um, washcloth just to make sure there's no residual powder in it. From the previous time I used it. Oh, there isn't. So that's good. Right. Go back into Lilac You a lot. I'm going to go into one of these two. I think this one is closer to the pinky issues, which is filtered. Yes, I'm a. Just wiped my fingers off on my pyjama trousers. I need to go in the wash, so. Right. So, this one I'm going to run in very, very tiny, 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 tiny circles. Just through the crease, just to deepen it up a bit. And obviously, if you've lifted your crease up, this is where you will now add this colour along the line that you've created. 
because anything dark recedes or goes backwards and anything light comes forward. So I'm just giving this a good old blend. See purples are the most difficult colour to create so the fact these are blending this well is really, really impressive. And then like I said just relax my brow and you can see, you can just see it peeking out so I've brought it up high enough. So that's good. I'm just going to pop a bit of this on the outer edge of the eye as well. And just do a quick windscreen wiper just to make sure I've got it fully into that crease. There, hopefully you can see the definition that's given the eye. If you're at the start of your day, I do hope you have a good day. And if you're at the end of your day and you didn't have that great a day, then I hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. Gosh, it's so misty out there. We've, um, where I live I'm quite lucky. I've got sort of like 200 foot long back garden and then there's about 250 foot of allotments and then a railway line, and then a river, and then some woods on the opposite side of the river. So the only problem with that is that <clears throat> if it's misty or foggy in the town, we get the addition of river mist, because very often as a kid I'd be sort of getting ready to go to school in the morning. I'd be like, oh mum, it's really foggy out there. Mum would be like, no, it's just river mist, it'll be fine. And she was right, I'd get halfway up the road to go to school and there'd be no mist at all, it was literally just mist hanging off of the river. We get that a lot this time of year. But um, the fact this has been hanging on for so long makes me think that you know, maybe the town itself has got a bit of mist as well. So it does just... It makes the light really weird, it kind of... It kind of diffuses it, but dims it at the same time. I don't really quite... Anyway, deep joy. If you've watched any of my films from about this time last year, you will have seen um, <laughs> what the, uh, the garden's like, because we had huge amounts of snow, well, huge amounts for us anyway, of snow. Um, I'm sure people in America and Canada would laugh at us, but the problem is because I mean, we used to get snow when I was a kid. Okay, I am talking 40 years ago now, climate change has happened. Um, when I was a kid, we used to get snow every winter, so people knew how to drive on it because they'd experience it every year, you know? The problem is because we so rarely get snow now. There's a lot of people that have been driving for sort of five, six years that have never driven on snow and therefore don't really know how to drive on snow. Um, which, you know, it's, that's, that's not a good situation to have. It really isn't because... You get idiots driving way too close to the cars in front. They're not leaving adequate stopping distances. Um, it's it's just an absolute bloody nightmare. It really is. I really don't. I don't get why it's so difficult. You know, it's just it, it's. How difficult is it to think, it's snowy, it's slippery, I shouldn't be driving this close to the car in front, I should maybe slow down a little bit. Honestly the UK just grinds to a halt, we've only got to get like two inches of snow and the UK just grinds to a halt, it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. And that's my rant over and done with while I was trying to find the right brush. Um, this is a Morphe Jeffree Star lip brush, it's the JS24, but I like it because I can get right into the corner of my lid just by there. And I'm back in the It's My Pleasure palette, 
and I'm going to go into Earth Shine. Now these um, shimmers are quite soft, so you have to go into them quite gently. And they do look like they get hard pan pretty much as soon as you touch them. But you can still pick up pigment. I don't know if you can see that on there. So it's not that bad. It's just they just haven't obviously got a high oil content. Let's see. There we go. And then I'm going to use my Slay All Day in Jasmine to just wet that pigment. I don't tend to use jasmine on my face, I just find that that particular one, something about the jasmine element in it just dries out my jawline. Nowhere else, just my jawline. Right, I've dried this ferrule off so I don't get any moisture going down and loosening the uh, glue. And I'm going to pop this onto the inner part of my mobile lid. You should never ever go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. <clears throat> I know I say this all the time, but you will end up eventually killing the pigment. And nobody wants to do that. I'm just going to dry the brush off so the bristles are no longer wet when they go back in and uh, grab some more pigment to do the other eye. Yeah, see, I'm going over the bit that's gone hard pan, and it's still letting me pick pigment up, so that's fine. Again, wet the brush. The easiest way to dry the ferrule is just pop it in your knuckles and spin. Now, this eye is the one that I do have to stretch out, because otherwise what happens is that all of this shimmer pigment ends up, instead of being nicely blended onto the lid like it is now, it ends up collecting loosely in the deep creasing and then throughout the day as I move my eye and that dries out it just starts cascading down my face which is just, it's horrible it really is. But you can see I only pulled it out as far as I absolutely had to I didn't pull it out as far to my ear roll and I let go as soon as possible. Now you can see there's a lot more movement on this lid than there was on this lid and that's simply because it was pulled around so much when I was a kid. So that shows you how much damage can be done to your eyes if you pull them around because this is damage from 40 years ago. But it only revealed itself in the last three or four years. Right, I'm going to go back into the It's My Pleasure palette and I'm going to go into Bare Minimum. And pack some of that on. I've really gone for a pinky look today. How many people are surprised and thought I was going to go full on purple? I'm surprised to be quite honest, I thought I was going to go full on purple as well. And then just pop this in the middle of my mobile lid and just blend it across. So that it meets where the mat was and then just use the tip of the bristles just to blend the mat and the shimmer together. And then do the same here, just lightly drag the lighter shade across onto this one, just to blend the two together. Just dry the brush off. I'm going to go back in and I'm going to do the same thing on the other eye. Yeah, Angie does a lot of, um, on her Instagram, she also does a lot of outfit of the days and things like that. She has some really beautiful outfits as well. 
Right. You can really see the movement with this lid, can't you? So again, take it out to meet the matte shade and then just use the tip of the bristles just to blend those two shades together and then lightly drag the lighter shade onto the deeper one just to soften the blend. I actually really like this. Right. I am going to pause you while I pop some foundation on my bowl and then I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now, you my darlings will have absolutely no delay whatsoever but sadly I'm going to have to wait until the next time that I press record before I can chat to you again. So, see you right now. Hello. As you can see, I decided to use my Royal Purple Pigment Brow Pomade type thing from Revolution. <sighs> their brow pomades, the coloured ones at least, seem to have disappeared from their site. I really hope they're coming back and that they're just doing like a, I don't know, maybe a revamp of the packaging or something. Um, because I really like coloured brows. It's 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 kind of my jam right now. So back to this brush, and I'm gonna go into my it's my pleasure, and I'm gonna dip into sleeper and just run that. Along the lower lash line. I wonder which colours Angie's used. It would be so funny if we both decide to go for pinky ones rather than full on purple because she knows I love my purple. So she might be thinking, oh well, I'll do pink because the other Angie's bound to do purple. That would be hilarious if we both did that. That really would be funny. It'd be interesting to see whether we did similar looks. Right. Why is it? I have these brushes right at the front of the pot. So they're nice and easy for me to grab. And then when I go to grab them, do you think they're at the front of the pot? easy. Wouldn't it? Right. This is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. It's flat top but it's chunky so it's great for you know buffing out and I'm going to go into I think uh, imagine that I'm going to dip into in the lilac palette more of a, a mauve or a mauve shade just to buff along that lower lash line just to sort of soften it up a little bit I um, I've always had super sensitive eyes I, I struggle to put anything in my waterline which is why normally you'll see me go ham with a smoky eye underneath instead. Um, there are times I've tried putting item, you know, putting things in my waterline, and I've managed to usually get about half a dozen photos, and then my eyes start streaming, and it's like, okay, this this is uh, ah, this is not going to work. Right, I'm popping back into the It's My Pleasure palette. This is just a simple lip brush that I bought from eBay probably about a decade ago. And I'm going to dip into the shade called Mr. Sandman. 
just for the inner corner. Okay, that was darker than I planned. Not a problem. It is always fixable. Makeup is always fixable. But we'll just make both, both, both sides match for the minute. And then I will grab a highlighter. Is this the pink one? Yeah. Right. This is the Ofra Nikki Tutorials Highlighter Cloud 9. So I'm just going to go into this and pop a bit of that over the top just to just to brighten the inner corner fractionally. There we go. I like that. And pop this up under the tail of my brow. Pretty. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight all over my face. I'm going to pop some mascara on choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I will be back with my finished look. I am back. The hair is it's having a party without me I think. Um, <laughs> I use the same highlight obviously. The mascara is the Revolution Cannabis Sativa Blowout. The lipstick is uh, the Wet n Wild Liquid Catsuit High Shine in Chic Got Real. And I just thought it was a nice match to the look. And it's super soft as well. This is the second of the um, High Shine ones that I've got. I picked one up before not realising it was a High Shine and then really liked it. And then this was on offer. On beauty bay for about six quid and i'm like yeah, having that thank you so this is my final look using the two purple toned palettes from uh Colourpop. so i really hope that uh you've enjoyed watching this and you liked it uh, if you're one of my regular viewers please double check you are still subscribed youtube are still unsubscribing people I experienced it myself. I subscribed to the Shane Glossing channel. I liked the first test video that he put up. I rang the bell. Then all of a sudden everyone was talking about this latest instalment of the Jeffrey like beauty thing that he'd been doing. I can't see that. I'd been unsubscribed from Shane Glossing. I not only had subscribed, I'd rung the damn bell and I had been unsubscribed. <sighs> but at least it's nice to know it's not just me that YouTube are nicking subscribers from who genuinely want to watch content. So, once you've checked your subscribed and you've liked and maybe even left me a comment, perhaps even shared this so that all of your friends can come join the fun. I'm going to need you to go across to the beautiful Angie's channel, the other Angie, the Swedish, Angelica, I need you to go to Angelica's channel and check out her film and see which shades she chose from the two palettes and what her final look is too. If you are here from Angie's channel, hi, hello, welcome, lovely to have you here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, uh, this waffling on that I do. Um, if you've made it this far through, I'm guessing there must have been something that uh, intrigued you. Even if it was just to find out what lipstick colour I was going to use. So, uh, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family, which is super simple. You just hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey. And then ring the bell, choose all notifications, and hopefully YouTube will actually send you notifications every time I upload another video. Speaking of which, 
I've got an awful lot of other videos that you can watch. Feel free to pick a playlist and indulge. Right, my darlings, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.